we're going to puns. <laughs> we're going crazy with the puns. There was only one jumper I could say. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Oh, nice. yes. It had to be done. <laughs> On brand. So I didn't see myself rooting for two fictional cannibals, but here we are. Um, what surprised you guys the most when you read this story about these characters? I think, as you just said it, that there was uh, that there was uh, um, a truth underneath it all, sort of relatability, a love story, and that that just wasn't obvious upon first read. And something that, if you haven't seen the movie, people are gonna think we're nuts, people from America that um, have lost their minds. But I think once you see once once you've seen it, it really it rings true. And I feel like this generation, especially, we're craving like unconventional, alternative love stories. Do you relate? And what are you hoping that people take away from this film? I don't know. I feel like the beauty of this generation now is that, uh, in some way, the imagination feels so heightened and so um, out of the box because we've seen so much all mm -hmm. the time that uh, I think people can really lean into something strange, maybe in a way that there couldn't be before. I don't know, that's my that's my my theorizing on how this generation's gonna take it, but um, <laughs> they will tell us. Theorician, <laughs> tell her. Um, yeah, I agree. And uh, it's weird because uh, uh, Luki said it beautifully, it's not yesterday, he doesn't wanna be a theorician on his own work. And we don't wanna beat anybody to the punch, be presumptuous, because yeah. we raise somebody's expectation and then they, and then they, then they're bound to hate it. But, um, I like how you, I like how you, but there's a, there's a hunger, no pun intended, for things that don't feel conventional and corporately interested if people are just trying to sell you shit. And, uh, that's definitely not this, it's, it definitely wasn't the, or, the, the, uh, wasn't the spirit of it making it. I can promise you that. It was definitely just a feeling that we were throwing at a wall kind of thing. Definitely. I mean, I think audiences will devour this film, no doubt. I think they definitely will. Man, we're getting the puns. <laughs> yeah. We're going crazy with the puns. <laughs> oh, I have so many. I have so many. Um, and these characters, obviously, they're living in a time where there's no phones, no social media. It's freeing to watch them. They can be so unreachable, so hidden. What did you guys particularly love about that? And if you were living in a time like they were with no social media, what would you not miss about that? You said it so beautifully yesterday. What did I say? And just something about like the, the beauty of boredom or something. Uh, uh, yes. Ah, yes, the beauty uh, yes. of boredom, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> the state of boredom. It's tricky to speak about because you don't want to be dogmatic about what is um, better, you know, not having social media and phones, romanticizing that versus where we actually are now and um, being present with what's here and and being able to shift and transform and transmute it. But, you know, at the same time, it's really exciting to me to watch characters who uh, are <laughs> bored, for lack of a better word, or the word that I used yesterday, because y your phones are so immediate, you can get all the answers, whereas um, they didn't have that luxury back then, so back then. Back then, no disrespect. Please. Way back, yeah. <laughs> way back. But in in the era that these characters are placed, they don't have that. So you know, you you really see them figuring out step by step with it, whatever tools they have with each other, um, and it, it's just exciting to watch. I think. And I have to ask, obviously, you're cannibals in this film. Do you remember the first body part you had to try and eat? What was going through your minds? Was it Ooh, weird as hell? I feel like you had to do it more than me. Right? Okay. Yeah. No Did spoilers, but yeah, you definitely, you definitely, you definitely do one in the movie. Um. And, oh, I do, I do, I do, I do the first, the, one of the first just, scenes just in the, the film. <laughs> yeah, just in the movie. Let's <laughs> no, just make that geez. clear. Just to clarify, guys. <laughs> I think the only time I do is in that, is in the no spoilers, but in the sequence with uh, how do I? Yeah. I wish we were gonna, you know what I'm talking about. I know exactly. Um, <laughs> but uh, it was, it was strange. It was definitely strange. And Taylor said it so beautifully in other interviews that it was sort of the part that we worried about the least because it was the emotional beats. It really is, it's a love story at its heart. That's where the, that's where the, the, that's where the bones in the movie are. Um, so uh, <laughs> uh, that felt like more of a pressure than, you know, and Luca handles that stuff so tastefully in the horror genre, he handles that stuff not salaciously. And when he does stuff that pushes a sexual uh, limit. He does that very tastefully. He doesn't feel voyeuristic or anything. So, um, you're in good hands with Luca, in the best hands. 
And um, what I love so much about this movie is you see these two characters find total acceptance within each other for the first time in their lives, and it's so beautiful to watch. In your own words, how would you kind of summarise the emotional journey that Lee and Marin go on together? Hmm. Well, speaking from Marin's perspective, she's never been accepted by anybody in her life and has always felt misplaced and uh, odd and hasn't fully understood, definitely hasn't understood why, um, and is even abandoned by, you know, a primary caregiver for her um, at a very pivotal moment in her life. And her finding somebody who isn't related to her by blood, uh, who really doesn't owe her anything or doesn't need to be on the, this journey with her um, to be such a protector and a caregiver and um, so open and uh, really like a shield is, is, is I think probably the only reason why she's, you know, around <laughs> for most of the movie. Um, uh, and and what gives her a lot of hope too, that, you know, there's uh, a different, maybe there's a way to live with who she is and definitely that it's worth finding out. Definitely. And last question, as we're MTV, we want to know a song that would be on your character's playlist, Bar Kiss, Bar Kiss. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, do you have a song that you think your character that sums up? Bar Kiss. Bar Kiss. Bar Kiss. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. something that sums up your character, an artist you think just gets in. I don't know about sums up the character, but I guess it feels like in the world of it, well, uh, Enter Sandman by Metallica. Okay. People are gonna think I'm basic saying that. No, Metallica, yeah. love it. I don't even think I've heard that song. Say your prayers! Yeah, yeah, I know it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you made that so clear to me, thank you so much. <laughs> Um, hmm, for me, I mean, it doesn't make any, it's not gonna make any sense for anybody, but, uh, Wildflower by Dolly Parton. Oh, cute. Yeah. Love a bit of Dolly. 